Last night, uh, Attorney General Eric Holder and uh, uh, Robert Mueller, the head of the FBI, come out into a press conference basically saying, Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And they are referring to Iranian-American citizen Mansour Arbab Siar, and they are saying that he is a Quds Force operative. The Quds Force is the Revolutionary Guard Corps for the Iranian government, and that there are four other people involved in that plot, including uh, one of the top officials for the Quds Force, that's Golam Shakuri. So they, they say they do not have Golam Shakuri, but they do have Mansour uh, arrested, and that they have foiled this plot. And the plot was to kill uh, um, the ambassador uh, to, or an, at least an envoy from Saudi Arabia to the United States, uh, Adil al-Jabir. Now, if that wasn't good enough, they said later they also wanted to do bombings of not only the Saudi embassy, but the Israeli embassy. Now, if that wasn't good enough, they were also apparently trying to do this by hiring a Mexican drug cartel. The minute I saw this story, I thought, um, let me get this right. So, we have a storyline here where you line up all the bad guys you want to go after. Oh, the Iranians, the Quds Force, directly linked to the government. And at the same time, the Mexican drug cartels, who we've been calling terrorists all along, now working with the terrorist Iranians. And on the other side, you have a plot to go after a Saudi envoy on our soil in the United States, which would be unheard of. It hasn't happened in decades, right? Which I'm going to come back to in a second. And, oh, for good measure, throw in a bombing of the Israeli embassy so all the good guys, in other words, our allies, whether they're actually good guys or not, especially in the case of Saudi Arabia, uh, wind up on the side of victims and, oh, my God, you see what these dirty terrorists were going to do to them, right? Now, look, you've got the force of the entire United States government saying that this is true. So who am I to say that it's not true? Well, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying watch out, okay? Be very, very careful about these allegations. Now, listen to Robert Mueller at the press conference, the head of the FBI. Watch. This case illustrates that we live in a world where borders and boundaries are increasingly irrelevant. A world where individuals from one country sought to conspire with a drug trafficking cartel in another country to assassinate a foreign official on United States soil. And though it reads like the pages of a Hollywood script, the impact would have been very real, and many lives would have been lost. I mean, that, you're right. It sounds like a Hollywood script dre dre dreamt up by a neocon in Washington. I mean, it is their ultimate dream come true. So, you know, we've seen before the lead up to the Iraq war, all these things that were definite, absolutely, oh my God, Saddam with the nuclear weapons and the mushroom cloud in 45 minutes. And how dare you question the American government? Of course that's true. Then we saw with Jose Padilla that he was supposed to be a dirty bomber who was going to blow up buildings in Chicago. And it turns out we had absolutely no evidence of that. That wasn't true at all. How dare you question the American government? Look at how convenient this is. Here's the other parts of the story that started to get fishy once you read more into the details. Apparently, this guy uh, put $100,000 in the account of a guy that he believed to be part of the Mexican drug cartel that turned out to be a DEA agent, and he wired it from a bank in New York. The Quds Force in Iran doesn't know that we monitor every transaction above $10,000 here in the U.S. that goes through those banks? Oh, that's a rookie mistake that is nearly unthinkable. And they're going to trust for their, I mean, they haven't done an attack on U.S. soil in forever, maybe ever, right? And the one time they're going to do it, they're going to get a Mexican drug cartel that they trust? A guy that they didn't even know that turned out to be a narc agent? And then the government is going to say, go, yeah, let's get them to do the hit. This sounds so incredibly fishy. And then Attorney General Holder comes out and says the things that need to be said in terms of scaring us about Iran. First, he says, quote, this uh, plot was conceived, sponsored, and was directed from Iran. Now, even if you think you got the right guy, you're positive that it links back to the Quds Force and it links back to the Iranian government who gave the orders for it. How, how could you be positive? You haven't presented any evidence in that regard, right? But then here comes the killer quote. Now, unfortunately, it might be literal at some point. Quote, the U.S. is committed to holding Iran accountable for its actions. In other words, we got what we wanted. There are the great majority of the people inside Washington, not the people inside the country and in, in America, but in Washington, can't 
wait to attack Iran. So they turn around and they go, look at this. They're going to kill our allies envoy here on United States soil. We got to do something. We have to do something. And likely that's an attack, right? And uh, by the way, uh, let me skip over to uh, actually what we had slated as quote seven here because it's perfect for you. Saxby Chambliss. He's a Republican from uh, Georgia and he's a senator from there. He says when he hears about this plot, quote, in addition to allegedly sponsoring this plot, Iran has supported and provided weapons for attacks on our soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. This has continued far too long with no repercussions. Repercussions must be coming. Now, by the way, Saudi Arabia, not only is there excellent evidence that uh, some people connected to the Saudi government gave the funding for 9-11, but there is overwhelming evidence. A Senate report came out about it saying that they absolutely funded people connected to the Saudi government uh, fighting our troops in Iraq, that they were the number one funders of the insurgency, the Sunni insurgency that was killing our troops in Iraq. Did we have to act? Were there any repercussions? No, Saudi Arabia sends us oil. They sell us oil. Of course, we're not going to uh, do any repercussions from Saudi Arabia. So uh, now, as you see the reasons that that might be happening, now uh, let's go to uh, some of the doubts. Now, after my original uh, doubts about the story, I started reading what some of the experts thought. And I read at least half a dozen probably closer to a dozen experts in the Middle East saying, this story doesn't make any kind of sense. Let's start with the CIA. Uh, Robert Bayer is a former CIA case officer in the Middle East, so obviously an expert on this. He says, quote, Kutz Force has never been this sloppy. Using untested proxies, contracting with Mexican drug cartels, sending money through New York bank accounts, and putting its agents on U.S. soil where they risk being caught, he was obviously incredibly skeptical about that. He also went on to say, quote, sloppiness about the case that defies belief. I, in other words, he literally can't believe that the Quds Force is behind this as the US government is claiming. That's the former CIA agent whose job was to track the Middle East and knows about the Quds Force. He also said at one point, if the Quds Force wanted you dead, you'd already be dead. They're not going to be amateurs and do this sloppy job where they're like, I don't know, can we get a Mexican guy to kill this incredibly important, the most important hit we have ever sanctioned in the history of the Quds Force? Can we just get some sloppy guy uh, to do it? Oh, oh, by the way, the guy that they uh, have caught, now here's the parts you're going to love, okay? It, when I go to the other experts and I look to, into the case further to see what this guy's about, he already has a fraud conviction in the United States. Some of the other experts say, wait, you telling me that the Quds Force would use a guy that the New York system and, and the, and the F uh, U.S. federal system already is tracking because he has a criminal record? Again, inconceivable, right? And then you go and look into his interrogation and what happened. Somehow, the FBI does not have the first two months of his interrogation. They're missing, okay? And then you look into the second part. Apparently, when he started cooperating, or when they started, uh, in fact, almost immediately, as soon as they got him, he said, I don't need a lawyer. I'll tell you everything. Okay, I mean, come on. And he weaved this plot about, oh yeah, I, the top Iranian Quds officials, absolutely, and the Mexican drug cartels, and oh, uh, no question about it, yeah, and we were coming for the Saudis, yeah, yeah, that's it. And then we're gonna do it on US soil, yeah, 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 and we put the, take, took the money through New York, yeah, and then we were gonna hit Israel, that's what we were gonna do. Okay, and mind you, I'm not saying that Holder's making it up. I'm not saying Mueller's making it up. But this guy reeks of curveball. Remember the so-called insider from Iraq, Curveball, who fed us all this misinformation about Iraq's dangerous weapons that were going to kill us. And the government ate it up because they wanted it. They were like, oh, excellent, give it to us, give it to us. Oh, yeah, look, Curveball says they got nuclear weapons. We've got to attack Iraq right away. Look, even the Washington Post, which is as mainstream as it gets, is deeply skeptical, apparently, about this story. Here are two quotes from the, their uh, Washington Post article on this. Quote, it also would reflect a radical shift in tactics for a country that usually prefers to leave its dirty work to proxies, meaning Hezbollah, etc., and Lebanon is the way they operate. They don't just go in there and go, oh, it's us, it's us, who can we kill on U.S. soil? And then, uh, last quote for you guys, the brazenness of the plot outlined by Justice Department officials struck many current and former U.S. officials as out of character for Iran. 
If you got the Washington Post shaking their head going, really? This story stinks to high heaven, okay? Uh, so do we know the reality? What was this guy planning? What was the reasons behind it? Was it a real plot? And it could have been. It could have been a real plot by this guy and maybe even a proxy, I'm sorry, a, a, a benefactor in Iran. And the benefactor that they named could be part of the Quds Force. Uh, so, uh, keep an open mind on all of that, right? But one of the reasons they might have done it is because they're in the opium business. So, you know, and maybe they wanted to send a message to Saudi Arabia. So the plot could be real, but the targets could be different. Or he could have added the Israeli part. He could have added the embassy part. Uh, or it could be just what the government wanted to hear. And they, they, they tell the guy, you're going to go away for life or you might face the death penalty. And he goes, what do you need me to confess? When we tortured Ramzi bin al-Sheib in Egypt, we threw a proxy, we sent him to Egypt to get tortured, including fake executions. Eventually, he uh, confessed to what we wanted, that Iraq was connected to al-Qaeda. Later, when uh, investigators went back and said, wait a minute, it, it turns out Iraq was not connected to al-Qaeda. Why did you tell us that? He said, because you said you were going to murder me. So I told you whatever you wanted to hear, so you wouldn't do it. So I don't know what they did with this guy, and I don't think they tortured him. But somehow, they magically got the exact story that they wanted out of them. So, am I skeptical of the United States government's official position on this? Well, ironically, as Sarah Palin would say, you betcha. So, be careful what the government's selling you. Oftentimes, it's not at all what it appears.